adjustments now we'll discuss some adjustments which normally arise after preparation at the year end at the time of preparation of the income statement and balance sheet <clears throat> let us see what these adjustments are <clears throat> personal versus business income tax here there is a small difference between the sole proprietor and that in a partnership in case of a sole proprietorship income tax which is paid is considered as a drawing since there the income tax authorities do not distinguish between income of a sole proprietor and income of the business however in case of a partnership it may be treated as an expense of the partnership and may be debited to the profit and loss account we will discuss this in detail <clears throat> let us just run through all the other adjustments accrual concept in case of accrual concept this gives a rise to four different items one is let us say accrual concept outstanding expense at the end of the year it is possible that there are some expenses which have not yet been paid for example salaries because it is the practice of the business maybe to pay salaries by the 5th of the next month so usually there may be some such expenses which are due which should have been paid by the year end but which by practice are paid only in the next month these expenses though not paid following the accrual concept they must be they must be brought into the books therefore we have a liability to pay and outstanding expense represents that liability and is taken to the balance sheet similarly the opposite could be the case that is we may have what is called the prepaid expense that is an expense which we have paid in advance normally comes in the case of an insurance because we pay insurance for 12 months while the insurance may have been taken any time during the middle of the year in such a case as at the year end we may have some portion of the insurance which is actually related to the next year this is the unexpired insurance or it's called prepaid expense and this becomes an asset for us because it is a receivable <clears throat> accrual concept then gives a rise to therefore outstanding expense prepaid expense and therefore in the same way we may have received income in advance which again would be a liability and has to go to the balance sheet or similarly we may have accrued income that is income earned but not received which is an asset since it is a receivable so the accrual concept then gives rise to four of these as four of these asset and liabilities two assets and two liabilities next we will also discuss managers commission very often a business may pay its manager a commission based on profits so if the if the profits are 2 lakhs and a commission of 10% is payable 10% of 2 lakhs becomes the manager's commission however the the computation or uh, compute some element of computation is required when they are based on profits after charging such commission after charging commission in that case we have to adjust our calculations a bit because the total amount of 2 lakhs that we have said as net profit that would include manager's commission and profit 
we have to deduct the manager's commission and the amount of manager's commission would be exactly 10% of the profits after deducting such commission. We will go through those adjustments and some problems relating to the same later. We will then discuss a provision for doubtful debts. In detail, we will discuss what is the debt, what is a bad debt, how a provision for doubtful debt is created, what happens when we have an old provision, what happens when we need to create additional provision or we have to write back some of the old provision. Next, we will also discuss a provision for discount on debtors. When money is received from debtors, when money is received for early payment, very often we may offer a discount, which means the discount which we allow is a small loss to us. Following the matching principle, we try to create a provision for such discount in the current year so that since this particular revenue has arisen in the current year, the charge for discount also can be made in the current year. There is another term, the provision for discount on creditors. This strictly speaking <clears throat> violates the conservatism concept which says that while we provide for all expected or anticipated losses, we should not recognize any anticipated incomes. Discount on creditors is actually an income. We are talking about the discount received. To create a provision for an income which may arise in future is slightly against the accounting, is against the accounting principle of conservatism. Nevertheless, such a practice had existed for some time and we will discuss the same. <clears throat>